In this lesson, you'll be able to describe that down is relative to your location on Earth by observing a series of falling objects in order to define the effect that gravity has. Now to do this, we're first going to review forces. We're going to look at gravity and its effects, and then we're going to do a thought experiment about what exactly down means. And we're also going to be thinking about what would happen if you could drop a ball straight through Earth. So as you watch this first video clip, I want you to be thinking about a few things. This is going to be a review of forces. You should have learned about forces in kindergarten and in third grade, so hopefully this is a review for you. So I want you to be thinking as you watch this video, what are, what are forces? What do they do? Uh, what are some of the different forces that exist? And uh, what exactly is a balanced force? Our world is full of forces that push and pull on everything in it, including us. They start and stop objects from moving and cause them to change direction. They hold things together and make them break apart. Simply put, if it weren't for forces, nothing on Earth or in the universe would happen. We're all familiar with gravity, the natural attraction that exists between any two objects. While we take it for granted, on Earth we experience it all the time. Gravity keeps our feet on the ground and causes things to fall by pulling them down. Its pull also gives everything weight. The story goes that British scientist Sir Isaac Newton watched an apple fall from a tree and came up with the idea of gravity. He wondered why stars didn't come crashing to Earth and concluded that gravity must also exist in space. Eventually he used his idea to show that it holds the moon and the planets in their orbits. Newton also came up with three laws of motion to explain why things move as they do. His first law says that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. This is called inertia. This hockey puck doesn't move until the stick hits it, and it would slide continuously in a straight line if nothing stopped its progress. When something affects the motion of an object, that's Newton's second law at work. It says that when a force acts on an object, the object will start to move, slow down, or change direction. This pitcher provides the force to put the baseball in motion, and the catcher exerts a force to stop it. A rocket blasting off is a good example of Newton's third law of motion at work. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to get it. It says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In this case, rocket fuel pushes down and propels the rocket skyward. Sometimes nothing seems to happen when a force acts on an object. This is because one force is balanced by another. Look what happens when you stand still. You're pushing on the ground, but at the same time the ground is pushing up beneath your feet. These balanced forces are responsible for keeping structures like buildings and bridges from collapsing. On an arch bridge, for instance, the weight of a car pushing down is transferred to each end. The ends hold the arch together and provide force to support the car. Whether or not the effects are obvious, forces are at work on us and on every object everywhere we turn. Okay, so let's start with some of the basics. So what do forces do? Well, they, they can push, they can pull, they can cause motion, cause things to speed up, slow down, change direction, all of those things. But the first question that we need to really be thinking about is what is motion? Uh, what does that mean? When something is pushed or pulled, how do we know it's moving? Well, we know it's moving relative to another object. We need a reference. So if you look at my finger, right now it's in front of my nose, and does it appear to be moving? No, because its position, it's directly in front of my nose, its position hasn't changed. Is my finger moving now? Yes. Why? Because it's over to the side of my face. It's no longer in front of my nose, so I knew it had to move. 
So that's how we know things are in motion. We look at the surrounding uh, environment. We look at how things move in relation to other things. So that's how we know things move. All right, so what is gravity? Well, gravity is a force that pulls on all objects. And on Earth, it's the force that pulls things down. And we're gonna unpack that just a little bit more here in a minute. But uh, it's important to remember something called balance forces. What are balance forces? Well, balance forces is when we have uh, equal force uh, moving in different directions. So in other words, if I push both my hands together with the same amount of force, there's no motion because I'm pushing with the same amount of force but in opposite directions. There's no change to my motion. Now the opposite of that would be an unbalanced force. That's where we have different size forces in uh, opposite directions. So if I push stronger that way, so I have a bigger push that way, okay? Bigger push that way. You see my hands move, it's unbalanced. One force is bigger than the other and so we have motion. As you watch these next couple video clips, I want you to be thinking about a few things. First, I want you to think about what exactly is gravity? How would you define it? What is it? What does it do? What is weight? How does mass enter into the equation here? What does mass have to do with gravity? And what effect does distance have on the force of gravity? Some forces will work without being seen by anyone. Your body is pushing down with a force called weight, and that's being created by gravity, a force from the center of the Earth. Have you ever thought about why things fall when we let go? What is the force that makes this happen? It's one of the big forces we can't see. It's called gravity. Gravity is the force which makes things fall to the ground if you drop them. It's actually a force acting from the center of the Earth, pulling us towards it. You are surrounded by an invisible force. Right now, it's pulling you down toward the center of the Earth. But it's not just pulling you. This force holds the Moon and satellites in orbit around the Earth and planets in orbit around the Sun. It creates galaxies and black holes. It produces patterns we see throughout the universe. This force is called gravity. And where does it come from? Well, you might not realize it, but your own body is producing gravity right now. Gravity is the invisible force that pulls objects together. All objects produce gravity. This is why things fall. A skydiver falls to Earth because she and Earth are attracted to one another. Gravity may be invisible, but you can measure it. You can measure it every day. The force of gravity is often called weight. Because gravity is a force, scientists measure it in newtons. How strong gravity pulls depends on the mass of the objects. Gravitational pull is stronger when objects have a bigger mass. Think about the Earth versus the Moon. The Earth is bigger. It has more stuff in it than the Moon does. So we say the Earth is made up of more matter than the Moon, so it has a greater mass. And because of Earth's larger mass, Earth also has a stronger gravity than the Moon. This is why objects weigh less on the Moon. When gravity is weaker, an object weighs less. In fact, the Earth and Moon are each surrounded by an invisible gravitational field, but the Earth's gravitational field is much stronger than that of the Moon. Earth's gravitational field pulls on the Moon, but the Moon's gravitational field also pulls on the Earth. Tides on Earth are caused by the Moon's gravitational force pulling the oceans towards it. The pull of gravity decreases when two objects move further apart. Like when astronauts leave Earth and go into space. It also means that gravitational pull increases when those objects get closer to each other. So, the force of gravity between two objects is the result of their masses and their distance apart. The Sun has the biggest mass in our solar system, so it exerts the biggest gravitational pull. Planets all orbit around the Sun, as do all comets and asteroids in our solar system. The Sun has a mass about 330,000 times bigger than planet Earth. 
The Sun's enormous mass means that its gravitational force is so strong that it can still pull planets towards its center even if they are a very, very long way away. It is this pull that holds the planets in orbit and stops them from flying off out of the solar system. In turn, there is something even bigger that our entire galaxy orbits. Scientists believe that there is a supermassive black hole in the middle of the Milky Way, which our entire galaxy is orbiting. Black holes have an enormous mass packed into a small volume. They have such a strong gravitational field that nothing, not even light, can escape it. Not all objects within Earth's gravitational field fall to Earth. If an object is moving away from the Earth at just the right speed, it can enter Earth's orbit. This is how scientists keep satellites in the sky. Over 300 years ago, Isaac Newton predicted this could be done. He knew that if a cannon sitting on top of a very tall mountain fired a cannonball, that cannonball would of course fall to the Earth's surface quite quickly. But Newton also realized that the faster the speed at which the cannonball was fired, the further the cannonball would go before it fell to the ground below. He theorized that if the cannonball was traveling fast enough that it would never fall to Earth and would instead enter into Earth orbit, circling the entire planet its speed would have to be exactly balanced by Earth's gravity. Too slow and the object would fall to Earth. Too fast and it would fly further into space. This is how scientists get satellites to orbit Earth. They balance the exact speed of the satellite with the exact gravitational force pulling on it. This is why satellites can orbit the Earth at different heights by adjusting their speed. In theory, a satellite can stay orbiting around the Earth forever. But in reality, there are other forces that slow them down. These forces include friction from particles in space. Eventually, the satellites fall to Earth. So keeping a satellite in orbit can require lots of small adjustments. Gravity doesn't just keep our feet on the ground. It is also the force that keeps the Moon orbiting around the Earth and the Earth orbiting around the Sun and our entire galaxy orbiting around the center of the Milky Way. That was a lot of information about gravity that came at you all at once. So let's unpack some of this. Okay, what do we know about gravity? Well, first it's invisible. We can't see it. If you if you look around right now, you can't see gravity, but you know it's working. How do you know it? Well, are you floating away right now? Is your television floating away right now? Is your computer floating away right now? No, it's not. Even if you were to throw those things up, would they just float off and go off forever? No, they're gonna come back down. So it's an invisible force that we can't see, but we do see and feel the effects. It's also what we call a non-contact force, okay? Which means it doesn't have to be touching in order to affect me. So if I'm out in space, if I'm the astronauts, remember we just launched uh, from American soil about a week ago, so that's awesome news. Uh, but those astronauts are orbiting Earth in the International Space Station right now, and they're being pulled by gravity. They're not touching the Earth, but they're still being pulled down to Earth by Earth's gravity. So uh, gravity is a non-contact force. Now, what's gravity doing? Well, it's pulling us, okay? Unlike electricity and magnetism, where opposites um, re uh, attract and likes repel, okay, those forces can push and pull. Gravity is unique in that it can only pull. Gravity doesn't push. Okay, gravity only pulls, okay? Now, what, what are some other things that gravity does? Well, it keeps uh, you on the Earth, okay, and everything around you, it keeps us all here on Earth, and uh, it keeps planets orbiting the sun. It has a very large field within which the effects of gravity can be felt. And you saw in the video that sun has an extremely large field of influence, and uh, its gravitational field keeps all the planets and a whole bunch of other things uh, orbiting in our solar system. Uh, but for you here on Earth, the important thing to remember is that gravity keeps us down on the ground. Now, what exactly is weight? Well, weight is not the same thing as mass. Your middle school science teacher will thank you for this. Okay, this is very important. Well, what is weight? Weight is the measurement that we give to describe the amount of force that gravity has on you. Okay, so if you weigh 150 pounds 
that's how much gravity is pulling on on you excuse me that's the force of gravity on you okay mass is the amount of matter that makes up who you are or makes up any object now why is that important well think of those astronauts out in space again okay when they were on earth let's say they weighed 100 pounds okay if they go up into the international space station they're orbiting earth we say they're weightless huh well that's interesting what does that mean does that mean they suddenly don't exist because they don't have any weight well they're weightless because the effect of gravity is not the same in space as it is on earth so they have much less weight actually those astronauts are falling they're in a constant state of free fall um, but they still have their mass so let's say they weighed I, I don't know, I'm making this up, but let's just say they weighed 50 kilograms. I don't know. And uh, let's just say uh, that they go into space. They're still going to be 50 kilograms. Why? Because their mass doesn't change. So just a little, little tip for you when you get into middle school science. Just remember, weight and mass are not the same. Weight measures the amount of uh, gravity's pull on you. Mass is the amount of matter that makes you up. Okay? Now, what does mass have to do with this? Even more so uh, than, and, um, you know, being different than weight, mass uh, has to do with the amount of gravity that an object has. So the more massive an object is, the more gravity it has. You have mass. You actually have gravity. You're producing gravity. However, because you're relatively small when compared to something like the Earth, the amount of gravity that you produce is so small it's almost undetectable by even the most sophisticated instruments that we have. So we don't really think of ourselves as producing gravity, but something as big as the Earth, the Earth is huge. And so the Earth has way more gravity. So Earth wins in the tug of war. You, you technically are pulling on Earth and Earth is pulling on you, but because Earth is so much more massive than you are, Earth wins, it has more gravity. And what, what does distance have to do? Well, the farther an object gets away from another object, the less the gravitational pull, okay? And uh, the opposite is true. The closer you get, the greater the, uh, the, the pull. And that's why um, the Earth and the Moon stay in orbit, or the Moon orbits around the Earth um, as the Earth orbits around the Sun because everything's in balance. That's why we learned about balance forces just a few minutes ago. If things weren't in balance, one would crash into the other, but they're positioned just right so that the forces are, of gravity are balanced out. So what does distance have to do? Farther distance, weaker pull of gravity, shorter distance, increased pull of gravity. So let's do this little thought experiment here. What exactly is down? This is something that we were trying to figure out in our lesson. Uh, what, what exactly is down? Well, if you're standing here uh, near the North Pole and you were to drop a ball, what is down? Well, down is in that direction, right? It falls down. But Earth is a sphere. We looked at this in our last lesson. How do we know Earth is a sphere? How do we know it's round? Well, for example, when there's a lunar eclipse, we can see Earth's shadow on the moon and we can see that curve. So that's one way uh, that we know. There are other ways as well, but that, that's one way that we know. Uh, why does that matter? Well, because if you're in a three-dimensional shape, if, if you're not on a flat surface, a three-dimensional curve shape like this, um, people are going to be oriented in different ways. So let's look at this person over here near the coast of Africa. When this person drops a ball, what direction will the ball go? Is it still going to go down? Well, yeah, of course it's going to go down because Earth's gravity is going to pull it down. But what does down look like to that person? Well, you might have to turn your head a little bit, but if you think about it, the force of gravity is going to pull that ball down in that direction. What about the person standing here near the South Pole? Well, it's really hard to kind of turn your head all the way around that way. But think of it, if they drop the ball, it's still going to fall down. But now it's going to fall in that direction. What about this person over here uh, in the Pacific Ocean? When they drop a ball, 
to them it's going to go down but to us it's going to look like that direction well where are all those arrows pointed to they're pointed to the center of the earth now it looks like i drew that uh on the surface of the earth and this is a limitation of this model no model is ever perfect but what i want you to think about is that earth is a three-dimensional shape okay and it's a sphere which means there's a center in there and that's really what i'm trying to circle here is the center so down is this direction right but it's a local description it's all about those reference points remember at the beginning we talked about motion how do we know things are in motion well we know they're in motion relative to their uh, position to another object well down is de it depends on your position so for us up here down goes kind of south if you want to use a cardinal direction over here down would be west up here down would be south down here down would be east but that's all perspective so it's a local description but regardless we know that earth is pulling things down to the ground and it's ultimately trying to pull it to the center of the earth so let's have a little fun with this now this of course is a thought experiment this couldn't actually happen but what if we were able to dig a tunnel that went all the way from the north pole to the south pole straight through the middle of the earth and there's just this long tunnel and what if we were to drop a ball into that tunnel what's it going to do I'll give you a second i want you to think about that what's going to happen to that ball now, I'll bet some of you said that ball is going to fall straight down. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You even see the arrow here showing that's going to fall down. Um, I'll bet some of you might have thought, oh, that ball is going to fall all the way down and it's going to fall out because I know gravity pulls things down. Huh, that's interesting. That's wrong, but that's interesting. <laughs> and don't be worried if you're wrong. That's okay. This is a thought experiment. This is just to see what your brain can come up with. Um, uh, well, maybe some of you think the ball will go down, but then it'll just kind of go in orbit around the Earth, kind of like that, even though that's not the best orbital path uh, that I drew. Well, no, that's not right either. Hmm, all right, maybe it's going to go down and bounce back up and just kind of go ooh, 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 back and forth, back and forth. Yeah not quite think about it before er all those arrows when we were trying to figure out what down was all those arrows were pointing where pointing to the center of the earth so what's going to happen well eventually if this could happen which it can't that ball is just going to travel down and eventually it's just gonna remain in the center of the earth why because gravity tries to pull all objects to its center okay so now you should be able to describe that down is relative to your location on earth when you drop an object what's going to happen well you now know that gravity is going to pull things down and where is it pulling it well you now know that gravity is pulling things towards the center of our planet